Hello and thank you for joining us on the Tuesday edition of Journalist Standout. I'm Ayodili Uzubaku. Today on the program, protesting youths block Abuja Kaduna Highway over insistent abduction as bandits kill Emir of Beniguari driver. Bond vehicle again, unknown gunmen attack INEC office, police division in Oka, Anambra State, and later on the show, federal government declares 63 Nigerians, 27 foreign travelers from India, Brazil, and Turkey wanted for violation for violating COVID-19 quarantine protocols. I'll be hanging out with Shola Ojewusi and Asukwa James. So if you're ready, let the hangout start now. Thank you for staying with us. There's limit to the extent of discomfort that a person can take without raising alarm or seeking help. Insistent killings and abduction in Nigeria are getting to unbearable level and the youths are becoming restive. Angry youths blocked the Abuja Kaduna Expressway on Monday to protest over the insistent kidnapping in the area. They were angered by abduction of 12 people in Goraka town in Niger. Meanwhile, in Kaduna State, bandits killed the driver of Emiao Beniguari Nasiru Sakin Zango when he was returning from a trip to Kaduna. They also burnt the car he was driving. But let's share the story with you. The whole stretch of the Abuja Kaduna Expressway is on lockdown. People are angry, and it will be very difficult to calm the frayed nerves. We did the Joshua the money block everywhere. Now this for a loss of soldier away see the scene now. Carry all of us. Go inside bush. Huh? So go, go follow them. Find these people. Now we go like this. But as we reach, we never enter inside the bush finish. Now there's soldier. Pack their motto. As you gather our son, I saw they gather me. Like I say, I be small picking. They tell me what you know. Okay, I tell them, say, soldier, if you are not go, more I give you the gun. May you. Now there we day. Now there we day. Now we hear say police shoot one of us for you. Hey, you see, this is very The government has continued to let them down. Their lives and property are now up for grabs as kidnappers, bandits, and other criminals continue to ravage their communities. May they help us! May they help us! Because if they're not doing like that, see, if they're not doing like that, this country will turn us like that. They woke up to the news of another kidnap for ransom. This time, 15 people were taken from their homes in the early hours of Monday. This is the third incident in the area in less than one week. A Nigerian city cannot be protected for lies and is being shot. It is an error. A country, a country where we have rights to live in. You cannot just, it is an error. It is against the rules and regulations of this country. Those people are over there, they are not seeing our pain. Another scene played out at the Madala area of the highway. In a clear case of jungle justice, an angry mob set ablaze two people they suspect to be kidnappers. And uh, those people, uh, these uh, boys, they said it's one chance, that they are one chance. And even, I was even holding the girl when they are eating, eating her some things on her head. I even tried to hold her to hear from her. Actually, she was, she don't even know what to say because I know she's one chance. This is this other one that they capture. They start beating him. I was even trying, when they slap him, look at my body. Look at my body, they splash with blood. And I try to even make things to be calm. Actually, those boys, they decide, they said no. This one, they must prosecute her. That is why they burned the other lady and this one too, they burned her. Motorists traveling the long stretch of the Abuja Kaduna Road are at the receiving end. Everything is on standstill. This is one of Nigeria's most important highways that connects north to south and forms a critical part of the larger highway system, enabling the movement of people and goods from the north to the south and vice versa. This blockade has lasted for more than five hours and the youths around here say they are not 
opening the roads until those kidnapped are set free. For now, security agents appear to be helpless, and the youth are even suggesting that they are ready to take it upon themselves to go inside there and free all of those who are currently in captivity. Yes, yes. Femi Akondi, TVC News, Garaka Junction, Suleja, Ninja State. Yes. At school, breakdown of law and order, almost, you know, a, a country that is bleeding seriously. I checked out the headline of a national daily today, and the newspaper said 126 people, 125 people hmm. killed across the country, died across the country yesterday. Hmm. This is not a very good time as well. Exactly, Ayo. This is a country in serious mourning. Forget that we wake up in the morning, we pray and we thank God that we are alive. But there are so many people out there who are not sleeping. Hmm. They find it very difficult to sleep, not because they don't have a shelter over their heads, but because even when they have shelter, they, can they can't even sleep. Because in their homes right now, some people, right now, what kidnappers do, they come into your house and even kidnap you. It's as bad as that. And from what we have just seen... The breakdown of law and order it is, is a symptom of it a is, failing state. Yes. It is... This, the one we have just seen is what the government should have done, which is to protect us. But people are now taking it upon themselves to become heartless. Because for a human being to declare jungle justice on another human being, it shows that the thing has gotten to this yeah. level. And we shouldn't be seen. The international community, everybody should not be seeing Nigerians be as, as, as being inhuman. Because this is just the height of it. Killing another human being, even when you are suspecting. The government needs to do something because everywhere and every day you wake up, the first thing that comes to your mind, when once you open it, once you switch on the radio station, uh, radio, the first thing you hear is some people have died, some people have been killed. If it's not in the north, it will be in the south. It doesn't even make headline again. It doesn't because, because and very soon, you know, there was a time Boko Haram, the killings concerning Boko Haram was like that. At some point, it just became a normal statistics. Oh, okay, five people have been killed by Boko Haram. Oh, ten people have been killed. Very soon it will it's be no like that. A big deal. It is no longer something that is even serious anymore. So government needs to sit down. I keep saying it. There is nothing stopping the government from declaring a state of emergency in security. Let's see what is wrong and then nip this crisis. Because it's a major crisis, Ayo. An mm. emergency. Mm. That we need to nip in the board. Shola, it I is 740 something days to the end of this administration. <laughs> but a lot of people are saying that, please, what will happen in the next 700 days? That, look, we can't afford to continue this way. Mm. Well, um, we, we, we've seen it all. These are indices of, you know, when you have a failing state. And we have a government that has to now sit up and think about the legacy it's going to leave behind. Are we going to have a government that allows the security of the nation to become an all commerce affairs? What we are seeing, yeah, it's so sad. It's disheartening. And, you know, you, you want to wonder why we have to dish out death to people, whether guilty or not, mm -hmm. they still mm -hmm. should have been given their day in court. in court. But then, it is also an evidence of the terrible anger that is in the minds of Nigerians about what is going on in their country. The state of insecurity, the, the, the sense of helplessness that has now made people to go on the streets at, and then see that. everybody as a potential criminal or mm -hmm, even a criminal. Mm -hmm. People have been turned to uh, prosecutors and judges on the streets of Nigeria because they are helpless. You know, this is every, just um, yesterday, 
there was this video going around about if a Jesha Road where some people were just kidnapped. When people begin to have this kind of feeling, the beast in them will come out. And when you unleash the dragon in people, a lot of things can happen. Now, it is no longer the matter of ordinary people being kidnapped or being killed by kidnappers or bandits. You can see that it's getting right to the home of the powers that be. We're just talking about the driver of an emir. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, when you kill the driver of an emir, what does that mean? It means uh, maybe by a stroke of luck, the emir survived. So when it gets to this level, you have to know that um, you, Asuko said something about having a state of emergency. We've been saying this for years about the need. I mean, for us to be able to restructure our security apparatus in this country. We have to have a very serious rethinking about the way we handle security. It is left for the government to know, do they want to leave behind a country in carcass? or a country that is solid enough for the next administration to take over from. We need to really rise. Look, I read about one policeman talking about the people on the streets being miscreants. No, you can't describe people who are angry that their rights are being trampled upon as miscreants. When people get to level of this kind of anger, they can do anything. Mm -hmm. But that is not to say more, that more Nigerians, that, I beg our people, don't take the laws into your own hands. Like there's a Yoruba program, uh, proverb that says, there are so many heads at the shrine of Ogun, but some of them, many of them are even innocent. Those you just kill, you may not know, because you are not sure, you have not prosecuted them, you have not given them the right to defend themselves. Exactly. You kill them, you have blood on your necks, exactly. on your hands. Exactly. Let us be very wary. You know, this kind of thing is not, it's not something anybody will be happy about. But then... The box stops on the table. Let's call his pay his pay. Our president must sit up. He either put up now or just find something else to do about our security. It's no longer a situation where we begin to tell story. We don't want any white paper fantasy. We need action. Let the president decide on a line of action that is going to all go well for our country and our security situation. That's my point for now. As well, this Abuja Kaduna Express Road, we've been talking about it the last two years. Mm -hmm. It's a very dangerous spot. Mm -hmm. at, uh, it's even preferable to take the train yes. from Abuja down to Kaduna. Mm. Yeah, exactly, Ayo, because I remember there was a time we were coming from Joss, you know, so I think last year also. January last year. Yes, January mm -hmm. last year. And and then they were even telling us that, ah, thank God you did not pass through Biringwari area mm -hmm. and things like that. We are saying that, why? They said that that, is, uh, that route is where they are. Go, 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 go. That is the main place that they have kidnappers, they have bandits, they have everything. And since then till today, it is still the same. Mm -hmm. No solution. We are still hearing that they are still kidnapping. And now look at the Emir's driver was killed. Now, bandits... We've been hearing about bandits, 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 and somebody will be deodorizing criminality and giving bandits one funny name and saying that they are not criminals. We shouldn't be going to that level. Uh, the Abuja Kaduna Expressway has been a no go area for a very long time. And it seems that nothing has been done, and then they've just abandoned that particular route, particularly that Biringwai Road, the Kaduna Biringwai um, Expressway. That one has been abandoned completely. And there are so many roads like that that you can't even drive where once is like f 6 o'clock you can't even drive. <laughs> in um, 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 Joss, that they had, a, that they killed a couple of people some days back on Sunday, mm. I, I just got to talk to my reporter and the next thing he was telling me, he said, oh God, 8 o'clock, everywhere is like a ghost town in Joss. Nobody moves again. That when once you are traveling and it's 6 o'clock, you're on your own. In just a beautiful city. Very peaceful. And peaceful, wow. you know? So, and, and, and it's the same thing in Medjugri, the same thing in so many capitals like that in the north. And very soon, God forbid, because we always say God forbid anyway, it, it can come to this side. 
Yeah, yeah, by by the time it's eight o'clock, everybody will be running, rushing home and saying that nothing should happen to us. In practical terms, we are under policed. Yes, in nation, we are under policed. And uh, even our security, the military, they are overstretched the way it is. Now. That, that's why I said earlier, late, earlier that we need to go back to the drawing board. We need to look at our recruitment level. We need to see how we're going to you know, map up the nation and know the immediate needs of every community in Nigeria and see how we can get these communities policed. And it also comes to the question of having state police. Mm. There is no other hiding place mm -hmm. now for whoever is in charge now of the, the constitution. Time. It is the time for us to allow the states police themselves. Mm. We just have, cannot afford to continue Prince to do calling this. us from yes. Ikorodu. Hello, Prince. Hello. Yes. Thank you for hanging out with us. Yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, I love nothing and uh, my God there. Yeah, good day. Uh, honestly, I don't know what is the uh, problem with this country. You know, there's a young guy there that says that... Uh, are you, hello, are you with me? Yes. Yes, go ahead. Yeah, there's a young guy that says that if the concubine of your mother is, is bigger than your father, you tell him father, what is stopping us from getting uh, uh, assistance from those who are better off in terms of military hardware? Let's call you, yeah, let's call you, yes, for crying out loud. It has shown, it has been known to the whole world that they are just, they are just beat for nothing when it comes to work here. If any country, small country, I can't just be, honestly, say we are done for. You see, we have this problem on our hands. Who stops us from telling those who know that they can be us? Who that stands for us? They can come and help us and solve these problems. That's the time I, uh, 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 Thank you. Thank you. So, as I was saying, state police. And they should be given a free hand to get them armed. It's no longer in a situation where you confront <laughs> well armed bandits, kidnappers, and all those, I mean, criminals. Then, when you are planning, you have to plan ahead to have a well secured police force system that cuts across all regions and states of Nigeria. Yeah. It's, it's time the National Assembly understands that it has to play a role in this. How we're going to expedite action. You know all those uh, uh, bottlenecks mm. that may stand in the way of having this solved will have to be removed. You, there is always, you know there was a time Nigeria was in crisis and we have, we have to bring up the doctrine of necessity. This is about time we have to also invoke that kind of doctrine to be able to secure our country, to be able to get everybody, I mean, mm -hmm. on board, and then make sure we have a, you know, you're talking of developing Nigeria, you're talking of the economy, who would want to come into a country to invest when you're not sure of your security? In the North, in the North East, when I read the accounts of how Shikau was taken out, John, you understand, as in, this is not the first time they said, you know, they've killed him. But he might have been faced with superior firepower. Mm -hmm. And that would tell you how these Israel people, how sophisticated and yeah, how yeah. determined they are. That if our army will be facing this Shekau mm -hmm. and we've not been able to get Shekau for some three, four, five years, and these guys <laughs> got to Shekau, blew himself or whatever, however the account mm -hmm. might be. But his group was actually suppressed by the other group. It shows you the level of opposition we might be facing, that the Nigerian army will be facing mm -hmm. from these Israel people, well-funded. Exactly. Because, Ayo, when the Israel, from that story, whether he blew himself or he, he was killed, the thing is from the account that we have, different accounts, it, it shows that it was a coordinated attack. It was not something that they said oh, one person was going to, you know, leak the secret to Shekau for him to run. No. Because that is most of the thing that, that we that hear. Organized. They, we are so organized we are and they facing, knew. We are going to be facing. This is the person who wanted. And then it was, it was not just a day's job. It took like almost four or five days. We are shooting and, sh you know, it was a gun, a serious gun drill for four days. You know, so it is not something that they just ran into. With 20, more than 20 gun boats going there, gun trucks to attack just one man to make sure that they 
suppress him and deal with him and eliminate him if possible. Hmm. You know, that was what they did. And for Nigeria, for the Nigerian army to sustain that effort to remove ISWAP, hmm. it will be very, very, I won't say it will be difficult, but we will need a superior firepower. Need help. Well, from if we, ha we have the money for us to buy the, the, the um, equipment, we have the money to buy the hardware, but for us to sustain it, for us to be able to know that, okay, fine, this is who we are targeting. Because right now, we know that, we are just saying it's this one. Before, we used to know that we have one person called Shekau that we want to deal with. Whether he has been taken out or he blew himself. Now, we don't even know. ISWAP is now an international organization, terrorist organization. Funded. So it is well funded. So it means that the Nigerian government will need the support of the international community. Mm. So if the president is going to sit down in Aso Rock, and then, because I know today he actually had a meeting with the Chadian leaders and some people in the um, Lake Chad Basin, he also has to stretch his arms to France, to the UK, to US, to Russia, anybody that he wants to. Even in China, because they are actually doing business with us. If he needs the support of all these people, this is the time. Because we don't know the next move of these guys. The next move might be to come to the south. The next move might be for them to go straight to the other side of the north. Because as we speak, as we speak today, Ayo, we don't know how many local government ISWAP is controlling. Because Shekau was actually con controlling some local governments. There are some places in Bornu State that you can't go. Niger. I had a cousin that was in Dambwa. Before he left Dambwa to Maiduguri, he had to disguise himself to get to Maiduguri. Now he's praying that he has to go come back to Potakot. That is how bad it is. So people will have to sit down to ask the Mr. President how we are going to deal with it. That's why I keep saying it. We, it's not every day they sit at the Federal Executive Council meeting for them to say infrastructure. If we have, if the president is doing so many projects, and at the end of the day, people are not secured for them to enjoy those projects, it's as if mm. it's just a drop in the ocean. Mm. So people, the development that the, the president of life matters. is mm. very, very important. Because if you tell me that you need you want to give me food, and I cannot get the access to that food, then what is the essence of you giving me the food? I have this call from Jalingo. F thank you for joining us. Hello? Hello, hi, good evening. Good evening. Go ahead with your contribution, please. Thank you, my brother. Um, I, I, I don't want us to keep recycling the same kind of issue. You remember one previous time, uh, Senator Dilma once talked about this thing, that look, this thing is getting out of hand. If the Nigerian government wants an assistance from elsewhere, we should get it. And unfortunately, the same senator that actually dished out Senator Dino, then at the end, if you remember, if you recall last, last time, he was talking on air and, and he, as if he wants to cry. Look, the thing that is happening in Nigeria needs assistance, and the president wants assistance, even if it's from Chad. Senator so Smart Adeyemi. Yes, smart like Adeyemi. Thank smart you so Adeyemi. God bless you. From the same constituency with yes. Senator Dino Milai. Oh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, exactly. The, the, the Smart almost cried when he was saying it. In fact, he, 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 cried. he, he cried. He cried. He was wiping yes, his tears. he cried. Yeah. Because he himself knows that he can't even from Abuja, he can't go to his, uh, he can't go to into his own uh, uh, um, constituency. I you know? spoke with a friend <laughs> and he told me he couldn't even remember the last time he traveled home. And if you have these people in power, members of the National Assembly, and they are telling you they can't go to their homes, they have to get holed up in Abuja, then it means they know what the, Yes, yes. You, meant to go you, back can, you can go and reach your people. It's, you know, I, I think the job has been cut out for whoever is in charge of Nigeria. They have their job cut out, the security, system we have to recreate we have to get back to the drawing board mm -hmm. we need to you know one thing is for us to seek the help of other nations but like the yoruba say if a, if a child lifts his hand then elders will carry but we in the process of the lifting mm -hmm. the lifting of your hands for support or for you to be carried so you know in the last three years you you, you have to show that you are really committed 
to the process. Mm. You have to show seriousness on your own part. Mm. It's not just seeking international support. You also have to show that this, there is serious sincerity of purpose, definite mm -hmm. net of purpose. Mm -hmm. If it's not definite, if it's not, I mean, well defined, then people will not take you seriously. Mm -hmm. You want to buy arms, give the international community that there is enough reason for them to give you and entrust that in your hands. Okay. There are so many things we need to put in place. Have we put them in place? Do we really show that we really want to secure our country? Are we really taking care of the people we are going to put in harm's way? Are we doing the right thing for those who are going to fight for us? Mm -hmm. Are we encouraging them? Are we showing them that we really care and that they are part of us, that we value their lives? If all these things are there, people will be ready to fight. Mm -hmm. People will be ready to lay down their lives. All right. I mean, what are we talking about here? Journalist Tangout will be back after this break. Please stay with us. It's your favorite news and current affairs program reaching you live from TVC News. The rising cases of attacks on police stations in the southeast is leaving many Nigerians puzzled. In fresh attacks, unknown gunmen attacked the B Division of the Nigerian Police and the Independent National Electoral Commission. INEX Secretariat in Oka and Anambra states. Police officers were reportedly killed and property destroyed during the attacks. Asuko, there's a trend. There's going to be a, an election, a governorship election mm -hmm. in November. Mm -hmm. Now, we are counting down to the 2023 election. There's a sustained trend in the southern part of Nigeria, mm -hmm. especially the southeast and south-south. Mm -hmm. And INEC offices around states have been the targets. And apart from INEC office, mm -hmm. another critical you know, uh, which a, a critical um, yeah, for, yeah, stakeholder yeah. in the election process is the police. S police mm -hmm. security. Now, these guys are sending a kind of message mm -hmm. that look, they might not at this stage, they might not be 2023 election, and I'm afraid for that Anambra election come November. No, the, I, I, yo, now is like the one in the southeast is beginning to look more political than even what we are even thinking about, because I don't understand how, in quotes, terrorists will be looking at going to INEC office, for instance. I don't understand. You understand? And going to police station, because the, I, the election in Anambra is just some months to come, which is November 6th. INEC has already prepared, they've started preparation since last year mm -hmm. on how they are going to, you know, conduct that election. The scheduled dates for primaries. Everything has been done. So, the attack on INEC offices is becoming suspicious, that, like as if some people, some key stakeholders who believe that they might likely not, you know, get to that top position, are the ones that are even perpetrating this. Uh, no, it's crimes. even like the philosophy of look, the, whatever arrangement the state called Nigeria is going mm -hmm. to make in terms of election. That we don't want it in this region. I am seeing hey, a pattern. I, I, I am seeing a pattern. Mm. You know, sometimes if you look at those what we call banana republics, one of the ways, perhaps, to put forward an agenda, mm. you know, when you begin to attack institutions mm. that are relevant to a particular agenda, mm. that, that should be watched, mm. because we are making our moves toward 2023. What is happening out there is a message. And the government, if the government is really serious about an election in 2023 and handing over to whoever is going to be the president or other across the board, then we need to have a very serious plan. In a situation you know, whereby policemen can't walk on the streets. So who's going game. to secure the elections? They can't even erect checkpoints. Oh. And there's um, almost total breakdown of law and order. Yes. I saw a visual you from a weary this afternoon. Yeah, this afternoon. Can you, can I you saw imagine men, the way two guys were holding a gun in AK the, the streets. Yes. The street. And they were they moving were not, around. Yes, they were not attacking passerbys. Yes. You know, so we that is the way they were passing by. They were just passing. 
You know, so they have a target. <laughs> so it means that they know their target. Mm -hmm. Is either they go to INEC office or they go to the police station. Okay, and then see. the thing is, you can't tell me that I know this particular the office. people that the people in these communities or in this state they don't know these guys, are you? Hmm. You can't tell me that somebody will come from one particular state or one particular state very far off, and the person will come and then he will enter into the INEC office, he will get a bond, kill the police officers there, or go to a police station without any intel, and, and they will operate for, for hours. And the listing of the, 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 I would say the good parts is that this unknown government, they don't attack citizens. That, that, They've that been attacking it. constantly. That They've been attacking. I, 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 that's why I told you that. <laughs> I mean, that's a structure the police. dedicated so it a structure lot of to making sure the electoral system is weakened. The process is destroyed or made irrelevant or rendered redundant as we approach 2023. So for you, if you are a very strong apostle of democracy, then you have to be worried. Because I've been covering the election in Anambra State since mm -hmm. 2003 or so. Now, in Anambra State, now, now, whatever, you know, they started, they started this um, off-season election mm -hmm. after the case between um, uh, Peter Obi and Chris Singh. Yeah. Do you understand? So Anambra State was one of the foremost states that started this off-season election. We, it used to be, you know, peaceful exercise every four, four years. You know, there's a regular place that I stay with my crew, mm -hmm. we do our life, we do everything that we want to do, spend some days, send reports and everything. Mm -hmm. Now I'm thinking, I'm having a second thought that <laughs> look <laughs> are, you, are you scared? <laughs> no, if these people are sending this kind of signal ahead of the, November election. No, Ayo, the thing is the thing is we, we, are, we are journalists, we are not politicians. We need to cover the election. Forget about that. You must go to Anambra, <laughs> whether you like it. <laughs> you will go to Anambra. The thing is... It's not encouraging are, at all. No, no, no. The thing is, we need to... The government need to also see how they can make sure that Anambra is safe for people to go and, you know, cast their ballots on that particular that people, day. Yes, so the, that people the, can come out. That is reposing confidence in the election, in the ballots. You know, you because know, if, if they don't do that, if they hmm. don't do that, we will have a major constitutional crisis in our hands. Because the governor, they, they need to one do of that the election. One of the aspirants was attacked. He needs to do that election on uh, You know, hmm. Hmm. he's still policeman with, with um, Charles Soludo. Yes. You know, so the thing is, the government will have to find a way to secure the INEC, the materials, as well as the personnel. The last time um, the INEC chair met, he, he raised this concern that they are attacking his own his offices. So the government will also need because he has other stakeholders, and the mm -hmm. major stakeholder are the police. Mm -hmm. You know, okay, because now, the police, Shola, because it's the police. This is a very wrong, time. To, this is a very wrong time to attack INEC. Now you know the system is so the way the system, the card reader system, and mm -hmm. INEC is even coming towards or making their system automate, um, automated, mm -hmm. not um, the manual the, process, the, 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 the analog transmitting yes. results yes. now and everything. Yes. Now, because they, tried it they have those things in place. And you know these things, they are not things you can just yeah. buy immediately. And you are doing this kind of damages. Some you, you know, to the, the INEC chairman said some days ago that there is this fear being expressed about the elections, future elections being jeopardized by all these incessant attacks. If nothing is done, it may affect future elections. Mm -hmm. So the message has already been put across to those in charge for them to know that there is a clear and present danger. Mm -hmm. Whether we like it or not, we have to face it headlong. Mm -hmm. We're talking of November 6. You know, you, you can re imagine the kind of domino effect that can come up would if we're not able out? to do that election. Mm -hmm. would, would, would they want to come out to, to vote for the candidates I mean, without being So already, I, I the I atmosphere of fear... The, the problem is, people who will be coming out, I just hope it doesn't turn out violent. Because if, for instance, you have a political party that feels that his members are not allowed to come out to vote, 
No, no, you no. Know, this is even it, a it big, becomes it this becomes not even a, a, a party thing. It becomes violent. Hmm. This is not even a party you thing. Know? No, no, no. We don't know these people. We've not identified them. For you on, I keep saying it. Why is it that in the east they are now saying unknown gunmen, mm. but over there when it happens, so they we now give them we begin to. As, as you know, I'm going to profile. take something from now, what you so just because said. Because the thing is, we need to. I I want to believe that the government knows who are the people that are doing this. Okay. And it is time that the government state it out, and then call those people to 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 question or call them and tell them enough is enough. Apart from the Joshua attacks. is calling okay. us from Abuja. Thank you for joining us, Joshua. Hello, good evening to you guys in the studio. Good evening. Good evening. Yes, uh, I just want to talk about the the security we are talking about. You know, when you are talking about the the, the issue of uh, Abuja Kaduna Highway, we keep on saying the president, the president introduced this, the president introduced this. Now, what should we call what is happening in the southeast? The, the state, stakeholders in that place, in the region, what are they doing? The citizens, what are they doing to help all these security issues in that place? You are appointing INEC office, you are appointing police stations. Now, is it Mr. President? That, that we will call his attention on to this again. We, the citizens, what are we even doing to help the situation? We know these people. We know the unknown government. We know them. Mm -hmm. They can't say they don't know them in that place. Mm -hmm. What happened yesterday in Garaka that we are talking? Garaka is just about 15 to 20 minutes drive to Abuja. It's even still far to Kaduna. So the security we are talking, the people kidnapping there, it's not bandits that came to that community to come and kidnap. It's ordinary people. I'm giving the information. It's not bandits. So we, the citizens, we, the communities, as individuals, what are we doing? Thank you. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Thank you. I, I, I think it's it has... That we also have our role to play. Yes, we mm -hmm. have. The boss I does think not just the, stop battle, the, table of the battle is not only using arms or ammunition to confront all these bandits or whoever. There's also the need to orientate the people, you know. The psychology of this kind of situation has to be applied. Getting the people involved, getting them to understand that as citizens, they also have a role to play. Mm. And also convincing the citizen that the government is also up to the task, that what is happening, we are on top of it. We can assure you that we will get them, we will be able to secure you. Because if it continues like this, like you said earlier, that's why I said I was going to what you said, that it may get to a time when people don't even want to go out to vote. So if there are no people to vote, what are you talking about? Electoral process. Mm. So on that government? note, people Ayo. should, you know. Ayo, the, we, you we, heard what, uh, is it Joshua? The caller, mm. yes. the last mm. caller. I, I think it was last week I was saying that. I've not heard any Southeast leader coming Speak. out to condemn all these attacks. Hmm. I have not heard. Hmm. Maybe they have done it somewhere, but at least it has not made newspaper headlines. For you to say a, a particular prominent Southeast leader coming out to condemn. Look at the, the, the video that we saw this afternoon. You can see that they, we are not attacking those who we are just moving. It means that even the, you, the people there, they know them because they were not covering anything. They were not masked. No, no, no. They were just moving. So they know them. So it means that during the election, Are you saying that it will be the, the same. The leaders, thing. the stakeholders, they seem to support what is happening. It, see, Boko Haram started like this too. And that is my greatest fear. Because if they are not condemning these guys, they are not stopping them from carrying arms and rather than telling them to go and lay down their weapons and allow peace to reign, it will boomerang into something that they will not be able to handle. So it is, it is the, this is the best time for the leaders in the Southeast to come together and tell their brothers, tell their, their, their sons to stop to lay down their weapons and stop destroying INEC offices and police stations. Because if you think it is somebody that is from the north that came to do this, it is a lie. And I, I, I can tell you that. Mm. I can tell you that. The unknown government. It is, mm. see, the unknown government is known. Let, let, us, let us say the truth. 
the government should be able to situate it that way. But an another thing I would like to say, Ayo, what if the, after making the appeal, you know, like I said, there's, there may be a pattern, and the pattern is to make sure the elections do not hold. That, at that's all the costs. Message, that's the message. The virus, so with that message, so, so the person you are going to talk to or appeal to already has a mindset. So it still boils down to the fact that the best thing is to make sure that these things are secured by all means. Wow. Because the INEC is already losing yes. money. Mm. They are losing money. Losing and then at the end of the day, the people who are supposed to elect the, the, a governor that is supposed to run their, their affairs for like four or eight years, they will not be able to go out to cast their votes. And, and, and it becomes and, a very big problem. And look at it, Asuko. You know, that and means it, we have to deploy extra security to INEC offices yes, across the someone else of, of the yeah. local government. Oh, you we understand? Have to stretch at least. You know, so that so is you are overstretching INEC's budget because all those. Let's even start with Anambra first. Because right now, from what has been destroyed, they need to. Their collision center has been destroyed. All the non sensitive materials destroyed. Mm. You, you saw um, generators all burnt. Mm. You know, so those, mm. are, by the time you start looking at how much they will spend in getting in generators, getting, getting the, 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 the cards, how about the card readers? The card readers, everything. You look at Hillock's van, everything burnt. It is extra money. I know this particular office. It is mm. extra, extra money for INEX. All right. So obvious. Moving on now. Enforcing COVID-19 regulations appears to be Nigeria's most difficult task in the time of pandemic. We have a precarious situation on our hands as the country strives to avert a third wave. The federal government has declared 63 Nigerians and 27 foreign travelers from Indian, Brazil, and Turkey wanted for violating COVID-19 mandatory seven-day quarantine protocols for persons arriving from Restricted countries. Chairman of the Presidential Steering Committee on COVID-19, Boss Mustafa, said they pose danger to public health. We want them to go to the nearest public health department within 48 hours for evaluation or risk being sanctioned. This is very serious. Mm. You're coming in from India. You're coming in from those, um, those high -risk, high -risk, countries. risk countries. And we couldn't ensure that from the airports. I thought mm -hmm. that some countries that from the airports they would have made um, a kind of arrangement. Did they used to say we we'll talk about the Rwanda situation mm -hmm. that they will make arrangement that they are, from the airports they won't allow you to go. I'm going straight to where you're going to be quarantined. It, yeah, I know Nigerian. The only thing that you know when you are coming, you know how much you paid. You will pay money for you. <laughs> Nigeria, is Nigeria how to collect down. money from you. Mm. You know, you will pay over there. When you come, you still pay. You go to the porter. You know, you go, go to, to the, the porter, porter, you pay. Then that is the only thing that give you. So the the process the and then the infrastructure. Yes, the, the infrastructure for you to even get tested will not be there. Hmm. And when you even get to the place that, okay, you want to do it, it becomes another big problem. It's like jam question, you know? You begin to stay there, you stay there for hours, and then this test will not be carried out as at when due. So the problem is, I don't know why Nigeria's attitude is always different from every other country. Mm -hmm. When other countries are making life easy for their travelers, but these are foreigners. Our own, these, you know, this, the, 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 the foreigners. Let me tell foreigners. you. Yes, I'm telling you that is the they same would problem. Have seen would have seen, yeah, of course, they will copy from what we are doing. Hmm. They will copy. You, you know, we have a failure of diligence here, uh, Ayo. Hmm. We already know what has been going on in these countries. We're talking of India, that has become like the hotbed hmm. of the pandemic. We're talking of Brazil and the, the third country now. Turkey. Turkey. What on earth? At least when, when passengers are coming into the country, you know where they are coming from. You allow them to slip through the system, I mean, through, through the security system. And now we are now looking for them all over the place. Are we so rich and so powerful that we can start sniffing mm. through the nooks and crannies of Nigeria? to be able to bring this pillar. But it shows, people are, you know, we already, we, 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 maybe we are, we are getting too complacent because the, the thing has not really shown any power in Nigeria, thanks 
to the kind of proactive measures taken to make sure that. But we should not be slack in that because India got into this problem because they thought it was all over. Hmm. Because we people are talking that because our son no. is so powerful, they're not. No. This thing, we, we should not be complacent. Allowing such people to even sleep through security, is, 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 it leaves much to be desired. We are already complacent, if it's that one, because well. all the parties now, when, even when they say, uh, don't uh, take more than 100, if you go to that 100 space that they are talking <laughs> about, you see 1,000 people, mm. you know. But at least people coming from such really dangerous, I mean, climbs. Deadly. So we, 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 we really have to, and then, these people that have been, I mean, declared wanted, I mean, they, they, they know, they can hear. For the sake of humanity, make yourself available for quarantine. We, maybe we just have to also appeal to them. Dude, because I'm already, not, if you don't make yourself dude, available, you're also people? criminals. Dude, I, met, I mean, passing. People? Yes, they would have, yeah, of course. You know, if you want to do the contacts um, tracing, mm. it becomes very difficult. You know, this is serious, serious crime against a nation. When you're asked, when you come in, you quarantine for 14 days and you sleep, you feel you, you can escape the system. I, I think, well, it, it boils down to the people at the ports. They too must know that it's not only when you are a leader that you have to be a patriot. You as a worker working in the ministries in all departments and parastatals of this country must know that patriotism also has to do with you, your role. You're talking of something that affects people's lives. People are dying, and maybe because of some pecuniary matters, you are given a few dollars, you allow mm. infected working, uh, uh, whatever, <laughs> to get into your country and infect your people, then you, you, I don't know what, you are worse than a human being. No, I was even looking at... Uh, at we, we, uh, we took the first batch, mm -hmm. and uh, I had in my card maybe June for the second one, and the federal government just said it today, maybe July, August, we should be expecting the second batch. The, uh, so so the by June, okay, so it's supposed to be June 22nd or thereabout, that is when we are supposed to take the second dose. Mm -hmm. So we, we are expecting that uh, federal government will declare, maybe they will do another Oh, I'm better so that we'll go and collect the second batch, <laughs> the second dose, you know. So, but as it stands now, I think one point, about 1.93 million Nigerians have been vaccinated with the first dose. So, so, I, and so I suspect by the time... That, I suspect that Nigerians, um, they are kind of skeptical. As in, yes, if you look at in, when the 3.9 million came, mm. I thought in... One week. Yes, that by, would have, by, by, would have, by then would have finished that's everything. Out of 200 you know? million people, what's exactly, is 3 million? Exactly, but you look at look at the numbers now. You know, mm. so it, anyway, it's good that the government did not even finish the three million. If not, we'll still be having one dose each, and then they will be waiting for the other set to come and take the second dose. But right now, the second batch will mm. be for those who are taking um, AstraZeneca, which mm. is the first one. Yes. But in India, I keep saying in India, because India has been the only country that has, been, that has suffered the second wave. And I don't even know whether it's the third wave. And, are, and the thing and is, the, the number massive. of deaths. Yeah, they manuf actually manufactured the AstraZeneca that so we are as using. Perhaps that's that's so set, is there a plan B? If India is not going to give us, do we really have a plan in place to make sure that at the right time, we get it from elsewhere? Hmm. I have Emmanuel. Emmanuel is calling us from Lagos. Hello, Jide. Yes, thank you for joining us, Emmanuel. Hello, Jide. You guys are doing beautiful well. Yes. Are you hearing me? It's this Ayo. is Ayo. This is Ayo speaking. <laughs> you see, our I'm sure you're watching. The problem in this nation is the, is the government. You see, the, 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 there's always, but when, you, when you are governing a set of people, you must be a leader by example. You see, our leaders have really frustrated the system that the system is not working for anybody. Mm. On a serious note, and we have to take this as a very, very serious issue. If the issue of security, sorry for bringing you back, if the issue of security has to be tackled in this country, the presidency must be ready to 
All right, I think we lost him there as well. Mm. So, like I was saying, India, for instance, in one month they recorded 100,000 deaths mm. because of COVID. And so far, About they are, 1 billion people. Yes, you know, so it's, don't say it's uh, because there are human lives. There are human lives that are involved. That's you huge. Know. So, they had close to 300,000 deaths mm. already in India. Mm. And where they are burning people, they are, um, you know, they cremate the most times, you know, is over full. So right now they are doing it outside. They have a makeshift um, um, crematorium or whatever they call it, you know, outside where they are burning dead bodies. Yeah. So, and the thing is, it's increasing. They don't have oxygen. Their health system is overstretched. So we are just so lucky that we are not, we've not so gotten to that level, to you like know, this. we have not gotten to that level so because already we, we have a health system <laughs> oh. that is near comatose, whereby if you go, you tell the doctor that this is how you are feeling, the first thing you will think is that you have malaria, malaria fever. So he will now <laughs> give you paracetamol for you to go home first. Then you go and treat yourself. So if you are okay, you think you are okay, you don't even know whether you have some other underlying issues. You know, and that is how we've been having issues in Nigeria. People just walk. That is why so many people don't even go to the hospital. When once they have it, they told that is what they will give you when you go to the hospital. They will give you paracetamol. That is the mentality of a Nigerian. That is how our health system has become. Mm -hmm. You know, so apart from India, Brazil, they have up 16 million cases. Not to talk of India that have close to 26 million cases. But we are so lucky. That our own cases is just about 166,000. You know, yesterday we had only secured about 42 cases or thereabout, mm. all through the federation. Mm. The so it means, are, I, uh, it means that whether we are not testing more, oh. or we have relaxed, or we are testing and then pe or people are not going to, you know, are not exhibiting that symptom, you know, for people to be able to test. Or for, you know? mm. So, but we, are we, are, we just know that we are okay. Hmm. But the, the battle is not over. Oh. That, I, no, I was going to say, because if we, we, we're talking of figures from India, from Brazil, from even Turkey. Turkey. And when we allow this to just slip into the country, we cannot do that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We have to be very ego-eyed about people coming from such places. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now telling us these stories, honestly, I, I mean, I'm I know that was how they did during the Italy too. Uh -huh. They allowed the Italians mm -hmm. to come yes. in, and mm -hmm. then from there, you know, this, this so they started. need so to need this in the book. We have to be okay. more vigilant. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah. Before we go, um, the symbol I call him the symbol. So we call him the symbol. The symbol is 64. That's the Minister of Internal Affairs and former in, Governor Interior Affairs. of Oshun State. <laughs> Internal <laughs> of Oshun State. Yeah. Of Benny Rauf, Adisoji, Arik Beshola, uh, Baba Kari, uh, Baba. Um, what's the name of Baba Kabiru. 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 Yes. Kabiru. <laughs> <laughs> it's 64 today. Wishing the minister on behalf of Baba Jide Kodede, Otitoju, and the crew of journalists and Yeah, we wish him well. We wish him well. Mm. Many, many, more, and many more years. Many more prosperous years ahead. So happy birthday to Ogbeni Rauf Adesoji Arek Beshola. And that's our offering today. Join us tomorrow for another edition of Journal the Stand Hangout. And don't forget to join Journal the Stand Hangout on Sunday, 1.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. 1.30 p.m. to 3.30 p.m. We're on YouTube, youtube.com slash TVC News Nigeria. I'm Ayodele Uzubakun. Bye for now and God bless Nigeria. <laughs>